Okay, if I'm doing a shirt waist sleeve, that means it's a long sleeve, which means we have to be able to get the full sleeve. So you're gonna need longer paper. I can cheat because I have long white paper. If y'all want long white paper, I can give you long white paper, but then it doesn't match any of your other slopers because your other designs you've all been doing pink. Otherwise, tape a couple of pink pieces together. Doing it the hard way means I'm starting with the tailored, fitted, articulated elbow female sleeve, which does not in any way resemble a rectangular box. I'm going to lightly trace the sleeve knowing that the cap line is the only thing I'm not changing about this sleeve. So I will trace the cap line in for real. Everything else I will do like really light dotted lines, tick mark lines, super light graphite because they're gonna be completely irrelevant here shortly, okay? So I'm gonna trace in the top of the, the arm's eye or the cap. I'm gonna mark where my cap line is. I'm gonna mark where my longitudinal line is. So I need to know that information. So my crease line down here at the bottom, I need to know where that is. The longitudinal line, center top of the cap, I need to know where that is. I need to know where my cap line is gonna extend on either side. I need to know where my notches line are because once again, my cap is not gonna change. Everything else I'm just gonna lightly trace on here, including the darts. So you can just see process of how we're developing this sleeve. Oy. The problem is I did it so light that now you can't see it. Okay. I'm going to draw in my longitudinal line and I'm going to draw it pretty dark. And I'm going to draw in my cap line. Those are reference points that aren't going to change. Does anybody know why it's called a shirt waist sleeve? Because when it's attached to a bodice, it's a sh shirt and it's a sleeve. And when your arms hang down, the end of the sleeve is about the length of your waist. That's how I know a shirt waist sleeve is a long sleeve. Stupid. Anybody watch um, like Stargate Atlantis and SG-1, anyway, they go to Atlantis and somebody looks at a spaceship and they're like, oh, that looks like a puddle jumper. And then the whole argument is that that person isn't allowed to name stuff because they always name it something stupid. And yet it's always the name that sticks. So I think shirtwaist sleeve is one of those, somebody stupid named it, but it's what's sticking. All right, now I need this sleeve to be more rectangular. That's it. So from my cap line, I'm gonna draw a perpendicular line down the side of this sleeve. Anybody know what I just made? A male sleeve sloper. I just took the articulation dart out of it and made it square and rectangular. 
That's all I made. All of that hard work to just make a sliver that looks like the male sliver. That's it. <clears throat> We're gonna square off down here at the bottom. So whatever your lowest point is, you're just gonna square that off. Once again, that's not real line. We're gonna taper in the ends. The book says three fourths of an inch, which for half scale is just three eighths of an inch. This becomes your new real line. It means this one doesn't matter anymore. This one doesn't matter. Dotted lines on the inside don't matter. It's kind of a mess. Now we need to put in a closure down here at the bottom because we're doing a cuff and a placket. So if you're thinking of a formal dress shirt and the cuff and the slit to be able to get your wrist and your hand in and out and then have the cuff tighten back up around your wrist so it doesn't slip in and out. Where does that slit usually go on the human body? Like think about the mechanics of the shirt. What part of the wrist does it go on? Does it go on the outside out here? Does it go on the underneath? Does it go on the back side? Does it go on the front side? Where does it usually go? It goes on the outside of your wrist right here. So if you're thinking about sleeve mechanics coming down the outside of your arm, where is that? That's about halfway between underarm and the top of your arm along the back side. So how do you know on this sleeve where the back side of the sleeve is? You can think of where the elbow placement is. If what happens if you're using the male slipper? Two notch, not one notch. Two notch means back. And it's about halfway between the underarm and the top of the arm, which means halfway between underarm and top of arm. You're going to find on the female sloper, that's like two and three quarter inches total, which is like an inch and three eighths. One, two, three. Why can I not think? There we go. So it's going to be about halfway in there. We're also going to bring this up an inch and a half full scale because this right now was originally built to hit at wrist, but we don't want that because we want to subtract some off because we're building a cuff. So we're going to subtract off cuff amount. And if it's an inch and a half full scale, then that means it's going to be three quarters of an inch full scale. B gets translated right up to here. So this mark just moves up. Oi. There we go. Okay, so we've subtracted because we're putting a cuff on. So how come we didn't subtract the entire cuff amount? Once again, think about the mechanics of a dress shirt. What is the worst thing? Anybody who's worn a dress shirt long term, what's the worst thing? As soon as you bend the elbow and that dress shirt hits you halfway up your forearm and then it gets stuck and then you're always tucking at the end of your sleeve, it's the worst. And if you're wearing the dress shirt intended to be worn under a jacket, you actually want that sleeve to be just a little bit longer. So you actually want the sleeve to end mid, like halfway to your knuckles, not just at your wrist line. If you end that shirt waist sleeve at your wrist line, it's too short. So we're all, we are taking off some, we're not taking off the full cuff because we want this to actually be longer when we're finished in the first place. Now, if we're putting a placket in here, we need to decide how long we're gonna make that placket. 
How much egress do you need on your sleeve to be able to get your hand in? Do you know? Right. Yeah. It's about that. Doesn't have to be exact. You decide. When I'm doing half scale, I like to do like a two inch placket. Like I'm just making sure I'm not a liar. Inch and a half, two inches, somewhere in that. Probably a female I'd do an inch and a half, male I'd do two. So this is female, I'm gonna do an inch and a half. I'm gonna put my placket in here. I want my placket to extend below the line, whatever my seam allowance is gonna be because up here at the point, that's not gonna be usable space in construction. So I'm just gonna drop my placket just a little bit below the line. So it ends up being, a guy used three quarter, or I use quarter inch seam allowances, so I'm gonna drop it down below here. I'm not seam allowancing it. I just need to allow for seam allowance at the top of this slit. So my placket actually is still an inch and a half, but up here at the tip of the slit, that last quarter inch is seam allowance. It won't make any sense until you're constructing. I also need to know seam allowance on either side of this. So if I'm doing a quarter inch seam allowance in half scale, then I'd mark my seam allowances on there. We know that this is going to be much bigger than wrist and it's much bigger than cuff. It's built to put pleats in and usually your pleats happen between the placket and the top of the arm. They can happen between the placket and the button, but it's really tight to get pleats in this amount of space. It's better if your pleats are on this side of the placket and come across the top of the arm. They just allow for a little more blousing on the outside. So determine how big your wrist is in the first place, how much we need to shrink this in. That will determine how big of pleats you're putting in. The book says to start one inch away from the seam allowance. So I'm gonna start half an inch away from the seam allowance. Knowing that at this instance, book is not gospel. This is basic design. And it says to put in inch and a quarter pleats with three inch spacing between them or three quarter inch spacing between them, which would mean I'd put in a half inch pleat and then a one, two, three eighths inch space. Why can I not see that? One, two, a three eighths inch space and another half inch pleat. I would mark that this is a pleat by putting in pleat marks pleat pattern marks. And then because I'm causing this blousing here, it's actually gonna change the bottom shape of my sleeve. So I'm gonna start from here. I'm gonna do really gradual along this side. I'm gonna hit down and miss this point or hit this point and then come back up. And it's just gonna kinda look like this. And that becomes the bottom of your sleeve. Your sleeve finished seam allowance, everything else on a female sleeve will look something like this. Okay, I've got my placket line, I've got my pleat lines. I don't have my longitudinal line drawn in here because it just confuses the eye and messes everything up. This is underarm, this is underarm. My placket's right here. The only thing you would do different on a male is you're going to have a little wider of a sleeve. You're going to have a longer placket. And you may or may not want the blousing from having two pleats. You may want to just do one longer knife pleat, but that's personal preference at that point. Male or female sleeve, it doesn't matter. Now we need to do a placket which is all gonna be based off this line right here. 
So you need to know how long this line is. How did I design my line? An inch and a half, three quarters was my total length of line. That includes the quarter inch I added down at the bottom. I started with an inch and a half. I added that quarter inch down at the bottom. So my line total is an inch and three quarter. How big are my seam allowances? This placket basically becomes double fold bias tape. So you gotta be thinking of this placket as a double folded hem. It has to completely encase both sides of your slit. It has to come all the way up and back down the other side. So however long this is, this needs to be twice as long. So I mark the inch and a quarter or inch and three quarters then another inch and three quarters because I can't do the math in my head so quickly. This point right here is turn point where it's going to come down one side and up the other like a really sharp V. Now I'm encasing my seam, which means I planned on a quarter inch seam allowance on either side. So I need a quarter inch for one side, a quarter inch for the second side. Then I need seam allowance across the whole piece, all four edges. When you're finished, you'll have a rectangular piece. It looks something like that. Oh, what happens if it's too long? Then in the construction process, when you're sewing down one side and up the other, it will overhang on the end. You'll know it's long, you'll clip it off. It's always better to have it a little long than have it be too short and have to totally re-put in a placket because plackets blow. They're difficult. Your seam allowance down here will be a quarter inch. By the time you get here, your seam allowance will be like three threads. As you're stitching up like this, turning like a dart and stitching back down the other side, but you're trying to have your fabric in one long straight line while you're doing that. I have a half scale sleeve constructed, so I'll show you how the placket looks when we're all done here. But this is your pattern piece. That's it. It's gonna work like double fold bias tape. You can fold it here. Seam allowance here, seam allowance here. It folds in and encases the seam like this, but it's going up one side of the placket and down the other to become a folded opening. Now you need the cuff. Yeah, it encases the slit. That's all you're doing is taking care of the raw seam allowance on the slit. Now you need the cuff. The cuff is the part that goes around the wrist. This is where as a designer, you have a lot of freedom. First of all, you need to know how big the wrist is. Then you need to know how big a buttons you're putting on. You decide how tall you want your cuff. Are you doing a one-sided cuff, a folded cuff, a French cuff, a double length cuff, a Louis XIV cuff, a pointed cuff, a rounded cuff, what are you doing? It's all personal preference math. Okay, then your cuff is probably about two inches for a male. It's probably two inches tall. Two inches this way, full scale. Wrist circumference this way. Button extension on either side and probably slightly rounded on your corners. And you're going to be cutting four of those, two for each arm. An inside and an outside layer for each arm. Two inches this way, full scale. Wrist circumference this way, full scale, plus button extension on either side. Whatever size buttons you put in. 
unless you're doing French cuffs. Then it's a totally different deal because they button to the outside instead of overlap. That's the only difference between a French cuff and a regular cuff is they're double folded back on themselves and they use cuff lengths to hold them together instead of buttons. It's just a little different structure. So when you're finished, you should have a shirt waist pattern, a cuff pattern, and a placket pattern. All three of these go together. And that's your shirt waist sleeve with placket and cuff.